from there. Really hard to listen and watch yourself. I think everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it, it's really well done. And, and I think it does convey a lot of what we're proposing for the regional plan um, and the vision for 2021. So Zach, will, it, it looks like you've changed back to the slide um, slide deck. So as you, I hope all of you were able to see and really enjoyed the video, but it, it really does help to convey that for this vision for the 2021 regional plan, it's very bold and new and transformational for the San Diego region. So uh, I'd like to just go through a couple of slides to just pull out some of the things that were in the video presentation. And, and then certainly we can talk a bit more as we go through um, at the end in the discussion. So Zach, you'll advance. So I think you all um, caught and, and hopefully heard this, but you know, as we're aiming to address the region's um, issues, we're looking at our key strategies, which are the five big moves. So that's the complete corridors being the backbone to our system. Transit leap, really that high quality, fast, convenient transit service, mobility hubs that offer connections and access to, uh, places to come together with those transit services, and then flexible fleets, um, really offering that first last mile options and the next operating system, which is the technology behind all of the five big moves. Really, they are five interreliant strategies that when you link them together, they're connecting our transportation system in a way that's never been done before. So if you'll go to the next slide, I'm gonna um, show you a few images that I think are relevant for the interregional travel and discussion that we we're gonna get into today and helping to understand how these five big moves can be seen here in the San Diego region. So this is Oceanside um, Transit Center's platform today. And we have coaster service here, Metrolink, um, Amtrak. And so it's very interregional. It's a gateway into the San Diego community. And so if you'll go to the next slide, when you are looking and you implement though, the mobility hubs, as well as the, the five big moves, and you're really making the improvements, you can really just offer a new type of waiting experience at the Oceanside Transit Center. You could offer complimentary Wi-Fi, mobile device charging, or even space where you can see in the image here, mobile retailers could sell snacks or other services on site. It's really improving wayfinding um, or kiosks throughout this region or in throughout this um, the station, but it, it really is important in helping to facilitate transfers at this very important gateway hub when you're entering the San Diego region. So next slide. And Zach, I believe there's about three or four clicks here that you can go ahead and, and do and some of the images will come, come together. But you've maybe heard that we've been working on here in the San Diego region on our proposed central mobility hub. And so the central mobility hub could be a key convergent point where all types of transit services from across the region come together to provide connections. The central mobility hub could offer, it could really offer that, that direct connection to the San Diego Regional International Airport that we've all been wanting no matter where you're coming from within the region. So really, as you see the lines coming in there together from bus services, looking at our complete corridors to those high-speed um, train connections, all coming into Central Mobility Hub. Next slide. And these are some images to just really allow you to take a moment to imagine what it could be like to have that Grand Central type of experience for travelers coming from out the region, from throughout the region. The beautiful chic architectural design that you can see here, it could also offer a variety of shopping and dining options and a comfortable and safe environment while people are making transfers or they're waiting. Next slide. And this image here shows what that platform connection could look like, really offering that central connection for where light rail, commuter rail, or even our interregional rail could all come together. So a much more inviting and welcoming um, environment. And so the vision, as, as Colleen said in the, the video presentation earlier, it is a long-term investment for the region. 
here in San Diego, and it was developed through a lot of analysis and data, a very data-driven process, as well as innovative ways that we've gone out and talked with our community to get input on making sure that we're creating a system that works for the users and for our region. And it's a network, and um, Zach, go ahead and, and click. It includes a fully connected network of managed lanes throughout the region, really improving access when people enter. Those are our, our rural corridors in the darker green there, really how we can look at technology as well as specific site improvements onto those corridors to ensure safe and equitable access, meeting the daily needs of those who live there. An additional click. And then the purple there is our high-speed transit system that provides that compelling option to driving so that it's convenient, safe, and it's affordable, and it really works towards getting people to where they need and where they want to go throughout the region. And then one more click. And then the, the pink lines there are our, our light rail services. So it can be light rail, and then you can see in the blue um, some of our rapid services. So really making an emphasis on prioritizing transit in this plan and making it affordable as well as making it convenient for people to use. And then I believe there's one last click. And then this shows the network of our region's mobility hubs. We have mobility hubs come in all shapes and sizes and they're spread throughout the region here, as you can see. Um, the examples that I showed you in the images were from the Oceanside Transit Center and then our central mobility hub as to you know, significant re inter-regional mobility hubs within our network here. But these are centers of our community that would provide that high speed <clears throat> transit access and also offer multiple other travel options to get people to where they need to go. And this is also supplemented by a deployment of flexible fleets to provide options for how we make those short trips within our communities and get to those mobility hubs and to the, our origins and destinations, really giving people an option and an alternative to having to own a car. And of course, even though it's not visually represented here, um, the next operating system really ties together. That's the technology component of the five big moves. It really ties everything together and all of those improvements to ensure that we're making the most out of not only our current investments, but any future investments that we do uh, within our region. And all of these investments, as you can see in this image here, are very focused on the Western part of our region, really allowing us to preserve the open space and environment and the Eastern part of our county. Next slide. So just as, as next steps, currently we're in the modeling and starting of our environmental analysis. It's, it's underway um, throughout fall of this year. And we anticipate releasing, releasing the draft in spring of 2021 for the regional plan and then presenting our plan for approval and adoption to the board of directors in fall of 2021. So I think that's the last slide and I'll conclude here. Thanks. <clears throat> thanks so much, Tori, and thanks, Colleen, for being our, our featured speaker in that presentation video. Um, I don't know about everyone on the Zoom, but I just got the, the tech tip about having an Ethernet cable at home so the, the video streaming is nice and clean. Um, so hopefully it wasn't choppy. If you want to go back and watch it, it is posted to YouTube. So there's that if, in case you want to go back and review it. Um, but thanks again to both our presenters from here. We're actually going to move on with the agenda and we're gonna get started with um, a quick polling question. And Phil Trom from, from Sandag is gonna help me cue this up and kind of speak to this polling question before I go ahead and launch it on the Zoom platform and allow the group to provide their input um, and select and make their selections. But Bill, if you'd like to just um, read out this question and maybe talk through the, the five options here before I launch the poll, that'd be great. Great, okay, yeah, Thank, thanks Zach and thanks everyone for participating today and to our presenters. Um, and I think we're well ahead of schedule, so we should have plenty of time for discussion and I'm already looking at some of the, the questions that are coming up in the chat. So uh, looking forward to the, the dialogue with everyone. Um, wanted to just, uh, you know, the transition, like Zach said, to a polling question is only the, the only one we'll have and then we'll have some framing kind of general questions to facilitate our, our overall conversation today. But what we wanted to do here with the polling question was draw from both the Connect SoCal plan and the efforts uh, that are that are getting us toward a 2021 regional plan with the, the development of the regional vision as, as, as Twery and Colleen showcased. 
Um, we wanted to really look at for this group, especially with interregional partners, um, what are those really important elements uh, that that help us facilitate this sort of interregional, uh, you know, transportation and, and, and trip making? So, um, as Naresh said, I think he said it really well at the beginning. We are kind of you know really one big region in so many ways, right? We're kind of by, you know. Um, by the various requirements of our different agencies. Uh, we have, you know, SCAG coordinating so much with our partners with Caltrans and OCTA and Imperial County, um, SANDAG what it is with our geographic boundaries, but there's so much travel in between our, our regions uh, that really, you know, it's, it's, it's an exciting uh, sort of conversation to have and we're really looking forward to it. So this, uh, this question here is to select the top most important elements from an interregional inter perspective. So uh, the first one is competitive uh, transit options. So this draws from the transit leap, as you heard from, from Sandag and this transit backbone that, that Nancy showed. And the second one is corridor improvements for personal and commercial trips. So this is that goods movement piece and overall corridor connectivity of, of SCAG and this complete corridors concept from Sandag. Um, the mobility hubs is that Way to bring in land use. So I, we know that that um, that SCAG is looking at sort of this linkage be, between the built environment and, and the transportation system, and under their sustainable development category, uh, Sandag looks at it as this mobility hub, as as Twery showed in some of those visual simulation, simulations, which hopefully are helpful. Um, that's what that means. And then the next one is first class mile strategies. We're looking at those as what we call flexible fleets, but we know that. Those are sort of under the, the complete streets umbrella uh, and, and SCAG. And the final one is this ITS, the technology infrastructure. And so uh, we have that as this glue, as Colleen said in the video, that connects uh, all the different you know, mobility options and elements together. Uh, and we also see that those are really highlighted in the SCAG um, uh, and embedded in the SCAG uh, demand and systems management component. So wanted to add a little bit of color to those um, before we, we kick off the poll question, but we'd like to hear from you. And if you could select, uh, I think, Zach, if you can start the poll, pick the top three that you really think from an interregional perspective are the most important elements. We'd love to, love to hear your thoughts here. Okay, I just launched the poll. You should be able to see it on your screen, um, but we're gonna leave it up for a little over a minute just to allow everyone to provide their feedback. Just FYI, panelists, you're you're free to vote on this one too. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I saw it came up in my window here too. That's great. Yeah, and, and please keep adding uh, questions to the to the chat for all of our um, uh, folks uh, joining today. So, um, really impressed by the amount of attendees. Thanks, everyone. I know we've had these. Uh, some of you have been involved either currently or over the years with our planning quarterly meetings between the agencies, and it's great to see some familiar faces in the uh, attendee attendee list here. I think we'll just give it a another half minute here, Zach. Yeah, it looks like we've got maybe 28 folks, close to 30 folks so far submitted um, responses. But uh, yeah, I'll just let it run through the two minute mark. Okay, oh yeah, great. Okay, I'm gonna share the results. Right. Should be able to see here. All right, yeah, and I see it on my screen. Hopefully everyone can see it as well. Kind of comes up as a, as a pop-up window. Um, yeah, really interesting. And maybe I can just kind of read what I'm seeing here that um, when you look at everyone's top three, 
transit really rises to the top, but we see this relationship with all these, these five core areas really being interdependent, which I think is one of the, the key things that Sandag specifically has been looking at. But corridors being uh, also you know, very similarly important as, as transit, and, and rising to the top there and that land use connection with the, the MOHUBs and under that, the first last mile and ITS infrastructure. So um, that's really that's really great. I think we were, you know, we've been talking about the inter-reliance strategies, uh, but is inter-regional travel a different animal, right? That's kind of a, a question that we, we really were hoping that this group would sort of consider and discuss and tackle. And I'm already sort of reading the, the questions in that regard. So I think with that, um, why don't we move Zach to the, 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 the questions. Um, and I already see some in the chat, right? So, so I think what I'll do is just kind of frame these up and then maybe we can call on some folks from the questions that are already there in the, the dialogue uh, box here. Um, but wanted to, to frame the questions as, as based on those results that we just shared there, um, again, with corridors, transit rising to the top, but so much importance of the other ones as well. Um, what, um, what is necessary to implement those? What, how do you actually get that work done and, and sort of working collaboratively from an interregional perspective? Um, and anything in that, um, in those strategies and in our overall presentations, as we sort of talked about, you know, projects that, you know, in part connect to uh, the, their, our regions, is there anything that, that uh, you did not see uh, that would help your agency implement uh, your own work and your own plans as they connect to the SCAG plans and then the, the development of the Sandag plan. And then we'll think about, you know, kind of maybe this is the second half of the discussion, but wanted to, to ask about interregional coordination. What, what's working well? What could be enhanced? Um, how can we improve that coordination? Obviously, that's something that's very important in, in terms of, of working across, uh, you know, agency uh, say boundaries here. So, um, I think with that, that's that's kind of this is the last slide technically, and this is kind of to to, to hang up here for the uh, for the remainder of, of the discussion. Um, and maybe what I'll do is is go back into the dialogue here in the chat box and look at um, some of the specific questions here. And Zach, feel free to jump in if you see any to kind of. Yeah, and I just want to encourage the group um, as you're looking at these four. Uh, discussion questions on the screen. Um, if you didn't type it into the chat, that's that's fine. If you want to respond to the one of the four that are here, feel free to raise your hand and we'll see you in the attendee list. Um, but yes, seeing no hands so far, we're just going to scan the chat window for previous questions. I see one uh, one question from uh, on this the California transportation plan. And so yeah, that, that was one uh, plan, at least from the Sandag perspective, and I know SCAG was looking, I don't want to speak for SCAG, and, and Nancy, feel free to chime in here. Um, that was really a, a good timing for us in terms of transitioning from vision to our next step, which is the plan to look at those strategies in the California Transportation Plan. So we provided comments and really wanted to emphasize the connectivity between uh, the MPOs and uh, um, Caltrans, as we see a lot of alignment between um, the, the direction there. And I think the specific question on the interregional transportation strategic plan, I think that was uh, that was adopted or, or passed along to the CTC in September, that we'll be looking at that as well as we get to our, our drafting of our plan. And as Twery mentioned, that's kind of this next step for us in the winter and spring um, seasons coming up. So I'm kind of in, and I think I don't see the name, if, um, is it, it's cutting off for me, Zach, but I don't wanna, it, it looks like Rye, right? maybe Riley is the, if, um, if you want to jump in and, and clarify anything on that question, because obviously the Caltrans role and the, the connection to the MPOs and the RTPAs like OCTA and others is, is extreme, extremely important. Looking to see, yeah, Riley Keller, if, if you wanna uh, unmute your microphone there and, and ask any more and have a dialogue about that, that would be great. Or else we can move to the next question. Okay, the next one is, um, is there one central mobility hub for the county? Are there other tiers uh, of mobility hubs, regional, local, et cetera? And that's a really great um, sort of question in terms of how we look at these major hubs that perhaps have more interregional connectivity. So 
to where we uh, showed that our central mobility hub that's near the airport, that obviously has major connectivities such as what LAX would have in the LA area. And then our connecting uh, major stations like our Oceanside uh, Transit Center at the border. So that would be another couple examples for us that are kind of these larger ones, but we are looking at smaller ones as well uh, within the communities. I think um, our SANDEG numbers are right around 30. Uh, so it kind of speaks to the, the scaling. So I don't know if, if Nancy, you want to uh, chime in or Tuary and, and add any more uh, to that question, because I think that's interesting, sort of the scale and what that means for interregional connectivity. Yeah, and, and sorry, I realized when I put an answer in the chat that I didn't say to panelists and all attendees, um, but I, I did put in the chat that we have 31 mobility hubs, and that does include the central mobility hub, and so their sizes and the concentration of services offered within each one can vary throughout the region. So as Phil said, the central mobility hub is one of the largest in the region, um, but then the Oceanside Transit Center, we also have one um, in the south part of our county, you know, at San Ysidro, one at Escondido, as well as El Cajon, and we call those gateway mobility hubs. We also have, because that's kind of coming into the San Diego region, and then there's a couple of other classifications from our coast, suburban areas, and employment centers, and so they vary, again, by what the needs of that area would be in terms of size and concentration of services, so. I just wanted to add that since I put it in the chat. Yeah, thanks, Tori. That's that's great clarification. Yeah, I don't know if, if uh, Nancy or others, I know um, OCTA is also working on a lot of mobility plans. We've been really excited by that South Orange County study that's kicked off. I don't know if there's any other thoughts on that, that sort of land use mobility hub question, because obviously it's something that we have enhanced pretty dramatically um, in speaking you know, to our last um, SCS that was done in 2015. If we have any takers on that one, maybe I'll move. Okay, I'll move to the hearing none. Um, and I guess Zach, maybe just to to check in with if folks are, um, if we need to promote them their microphone or if they have access to turn that on. I just want to make sure we're not precluding any conversation here. Yeah, just to refresh for the group. Um, Please use the raise hand function if you have comments that you'd like to speak out loud. Um, we'll see you. We'll see your name and your raised hand, and we'll be able to unmute you um, to provide your comments. But yeah, Phil, if maybe now if we want to circle back to the the four questions we have on the slide, it'd be I think it'd be a good point to kind of pivot to this uh, discussion about how to implement maybe the top three elements. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thanks, Zach. Yeah, I wanted, again, wanted to make sure everybody can speak here, not just the panelists. Um, yeah, so, so yeah, circling back to the top one, um, you know, what do we think is really necessary to, to implement those, those top elements? And I would say even all five, right? There's a lot of a desire and, and, and it, folks seem to see that, that those are all very important, but specifically maybe on the corridor side or on the transit, um, the enhanced transit side. What, what does it take uh, to, to implement those? And, and if you are having any struggles at your agency or on alignment, either in vision or in, in the practical sense of, of getting these projects completed and constructed, um, we'd love to hear any thoughts if there's any, any hands up, even with um, you know, regard to the planning on the Caltrans side, because obviously there's a lot of work being done there. Uh, that's really exciting from the MPO perspective. Yeah, it looks like we had a hand raised from Maurice Eaton at Caltrans. I think you're unmuted. Great. Yeah. Hey, Maurice. Hey, Zach. Hey, Phil. Uh, first of all, can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Okay. So I just wanted to offer a thought on uh, implementation as it relates to interregional transit. And I'm just going to make mention uh, of a service that... Uh, and I forget the line. I, I, I want to say it's like 742 or 420 or something like that. But it's basically it's the line that was coming from uh, uh, southwestern Riverside County, you know, the greater Temecula, Marietta area down to, I believe, Oceanside and also Escondido. And uh, those of you that are, are more familiar with the, uh, the transit services can know, you know hop on and, and fill in here. But um, the reason why I, I wanted to start with that is in my mind, it's still able to operate on the existing infrastructure. So, you know, we would, we would want to have 
uh, in, in sort of thinking in a, in a larger sense, we would want to have infrastructure that complements the ability of interregional transit to work well and be time competitive with you know, single auto uh, occupant trips. Um, so, you know, uh, just using that as an observation, that line in particular, um, you know, it can use, well, actually, uh, as I understand, it does use the, um, the existing I-15 to come down from the Temecula Marietta, you know, down to northerly San Diego County. And, um, you know, I, I think there's, there's sort of at, at least two schools of thought. One is that, you know, we want to support and encourage those kind of existing uh, interregional transit services because you know it's it's already implemented but you know how can we make that work work better and if there are um, smaller projects uh, literally that are at let's say um, the Oceanside Transit Center or you know at the Escondido facility and I'm presuming that it goes down to Escondido um, you know, if there are things that can be done there to help that that service work better, um, and both you know physical and and also on the um, you know sort of um, the the IoT uh, you know or operating system side, if we can make you know make small strides to have that work better, uh, either operationally or uh, using other means either a construction project of some type, you know, at, at let's say a transit facility or through uh, electronic means incorporating, you know, the, uh, the operating system or operating systems. I, I think that that's something that we would benefit from, from focusing on. So, you know, we're, we're not trying to have only one means by which we examine how we we do this implementation so that that's one thought is you know look looking at existing services that are operating on uh existing transportation facilities and then the other thought of of course is you know sort of the the the, the higher more lofty more aspirational one of uh, you know really providing uh transit only facilities transit only lanes um you know uh queue jumps along the likes of an sr76 that sort of thing that's maybe a bigger lift uh, for you no know, uh, one or both regions or you know you you sort of take into also you know the the county specifics from one county to another but um, you know I just wanted to offer that as, as a way to think about uh, the implementation question and and not sort of you know not restrain ourselves or constrain ourselves to one line of thinking as to you know how we go about implementing uh, interregional transit. That's really great, Maurice. Thanks, thanks for sharing that. I, and I think that speaks uh, to a lot of you know different different approaches in terms of what our projects. Often, I think for Sanda, we look at these as the ultimate build out, but the temporal side of that of what can you do early, right, with technology, leveraging existing infrastructure or service or, or right away or whatever is available um, to get sort of, you know, get you toward that ultimate goal or project, I think is really, really interesting. I know we're, we're not quite there yet, but I think that's a great reminder of the of the importance of those sort of early wins and what can be done sort of over time and not, you know, as ultimate build out. I think that's what I kind of hear a little bit in, in that, Maurice. I don't know if, if that, if I'm taking off on a, on a tangent there, but I think that's, that's really, um, really an interesting way because I think that really speaks toward what you can do to, to get projects in earlier, right? Um, yeah. That's he, right. That's the hope. Yeah. Um, and, any, any thoughts on um, from from other you know uh, thinking about OCTA or or um, or SCAG or or work with with Caltrans? Any any thoughts on that sort of I guess the timing side and leveraging existing infrastructure? I think those two are are really really interesting in ways that 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 can really build upon all all five of those strategies that we pulled there. I think that's it just takes it in a different place. But we'd love to hear any other thoughts that people have. Okay, maybe no takers on that one. I'm pull. I'm panning through the um, the questions here, at, so sort of simultaneously. If anyone else has any 
uh, specific questions, if, if you don't mind raising your hand and we can unmute your microphone. Zach, I'll look to you if there's any, uh, or Twery, we're gonna jump in. So, well, I, I was, I was, and I'm not sure if um, Zach got my message, but maybe if you could promote Antoinette Meyer into the panelists so she could, there was a question in a chat related to the executive order and clean transportation. And I think she could help in answering uh, Riley's questions that came up earlier. Thanks, and yeah, I see Riley actually doesn't have mic access. So yeah, that all the more reason to double check that one. Um, yeah, so Antoinette, are you, um, have you, we promoted you yet? I have been promoted officially. There we go. Okay, yeah, take it away. So it looks like it looks like Carrie did a great job responding actually in the chat to um, Riley's question regarding medium heavy duty vehicle EV options. Um, we've recently submitted a grant to the CEC to put together a you know, regional strategy, a blueprint strategy for medium duty, um, heavy duty. And we're of course um, incorporating um, a policy uh, in the 2021 plan surrounding the medium duty, heavy duty EV infrastructure um, needs. So I'm not sure if there's any other part to the question. Yeah, I'm reading it at the same time here too. And Riley, I, I think I did um, allow your mic access. So feel free to jump in. You can unmute yourself at this point. Yeah, uh, yes. Can you all hear me? Oh yeah, there we go. Yes. There we yeah. go. Okay. Thanks. Yeah, uh, thanks for answering that. I think uh, Carrie did a fantastic job of really uh, putting that together. So, um, you know, there's no, no real other comments or questions from anyone. So thanks. Great. Okay. All right. Thanks for confirming that. And thanks, Carrie, for, for adding to the dialogue there. Um, yeah. Any other thoughts on that, uh, on the implementation side, kind of thinking of, of what's really important when we think of these interregional trips? want to make sure we, we spend enough time on that one. That's such a, such a core question that really speaks to, you know, how these projects evolve. And as, as Marie said, it's sort of almost when they can evolve and how we can facilitate some uh, early wins. Any other thoughts? Feel free to raise your hands. Um, Riley, I see your hand raised again. Um, feel free to unmute. Uh, yeah, uh, so yeah, I do have an actual another comment. Um, <clears throat> so thinking about providing competitive transit options, um, you know, we had just finished up our state rail plan. Um, and one of the things, it's very simple, it's very simple, and I think that could also really make it competitive interregionally is just coordinating, um, you know, bus times and, and train times um, and really working with uh, your transit agency partners in the region to make sure that, you know, when, a, when someone arrives to the, our, a transit mobility hub, that there's a seamless transition uh, onto another type of, uh, of mode of transportation there. And also, um, you know, just the thought of, of a, like a unified, um, you know, ticketing system that's either digital um, or, you know, passes kind of, kind of similar to like how LA Metro has a PAP system, but maybe more on a regional scale. So just some thoughts. Yeah, that, that's great. Really kind of opening up the, the other component of, of transit is that, and, and the, the first last mile service is that timing and operation side, right? Making sure that's done. Right, so those those transfers are seamless. Um, yeah, that's a great point. I, and I see. How, I think um, Luisa has a question kind of along those lines too. What strategies are we, are you looking at to have us to have that seamless interregional rail transit connectivity, where there might be some different policies or uh, with the other agencies? So that's that's interesting. A kind of two parts: how to make it more seamless, and then how to in you know work with uh, those cross agency. Partners, I don't know if Lucia, if you want to add any more flavor to that, and and kind of look to the team to see who wants to to jump in on that one. Let's see. I don't see if any her hand coming up there, but maybe maybe I'll kick that one off to to talk about it. It does have to do with the operations. I know certainly as we look to our boundaries with Imperial and um, Riverside and, and Orange County, when we look at that that rail, we have that you know primary connection with Orange County, 
And it, it really means, uh, you know, that the mobility hubs for us would have that sense of place, that that information center, that then embedding technology, so folks can can pay for 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 services and be linked without much delay. So it's sort of that, you know, seamless. Uh, a connection that's provided almost via the technology, I think, and and allowing for the land uses developed to really, you know, develop a sense of community at those locations rather than just sort of modal access. I think it's kind of like that 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 mobility hub plus at some of those those major centers. Um, so I don't know if there's any other thoughts about um, maybe different policies. That's a that's an interesting question too. Are and maybe I would ask the question. What, what do you see as the barriers of policies with other agencies? Because I'm not sure if that relates to, um, you know, operators as agencies or land use authorities or the sort of regional policy making bodies. Maybe I would, I would punt that back a little bit for, or, or if anyone else has any thoughts on that one. Do you see a uh, hand raised from, well, I think Louisa, Raised your hand now. I'm gonna head and I'm gonna go oh, ahead great. and yeah. unmute you. And then Greg, we'll get to your your hand raised in just a second. Great. Thanks all for contributing. Hi, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. This is Louisa. Um, so yeah, in lines of the uh, what I was thinking more of uh, the having different agencies seem to be having different policy in trying to implement something. You know, everybody, all all of us wants to have some seamless. A uh, faster way for our transit riders, uh, commuter, you know, rail passengers, and stuff. You know, we want them to get to their destination as fast as we, you know, as fast as the uh, the operators can can get them. You know, um, so, so I, I feel like probably in the past, or maybe it's it had improved. Um, it seemed like uh, on on the state side of it, lens of view of it. Um, Maybe there seem to be some uh, other agencies having some internal within their their agency. There seem to be some differences in how to implement or how to operate. Whether they're looking for always, there's always the revenue side. Of, obviously, it's a fair box, fair box recovery, revenues, and all those you know, that that go comes into play to operate. You know the the system. Um, so, so I'm curious if I, I think there's some conflicts internally to uh, that that's that's existing that um, kind of is playing down that's kind of um, preventing or probably slowing down the implementation of having some seamless um, travel. Um, I don't know. I mean that that's just my take of of just being. Um, in the you know doing this for quite a long time, um, I may be wrong. Maybe it's it's changed, but yeah, that would be great. If I think that the more we have um, seamless or interrupted or less less time for for travelers to wait at the station and not be stranded, I think the 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 chances are maybe we will have some confident we we can earn trust to the travelers. That's all. Thank you. Yeah, thanks for adding to that. I don't know if, if Greg, if you had your hand up to, to speak to that issue as well, or if it was a separate one. Um, I was gonna bring up a, go back to the mobility hubs actually. Um, you know, OCTA is just kind of gearing up to study mobility hubs a little bit. And we are, we're still trying to kind of get our approach together on it. Um, and so we're thinking, you know, I raised the question on, you know, are there different tiers of mobility hubs? And that kind of goes to the point of implementation. It's like, who's going to be leading the implementation on these? I can see like OCTA or SANDAG leading, you know, major mobility hubs in the counties. Um, but most of them, it seems like would be, you know, local jurisdictions or even private entities. And just wanted to kind of get your thought on um, your approach for implementing the mobility hubs. Yeah, maybe I can call on, from the Sandag side, at least uh, Antoinette to share uh, on that one specifically on the mobility hubs, if you don't mind, or I can cover it. Uh, 
No, not at all. Um, so you're absolutely right that the mobility hub implementation beyond the, the station area is going to require a significant amount of coordination with both private developers and local jurisdictions. So, you know, one thing that Sandag has done well in the past to, to incentivize local jurisdictions to implement things like transit oriented development or smart growth is through grant programs. So we're looking at, you know, maybe retooling our, our grant programs um, to provide resources to local jurisdictions to help with the implementation. Um, we're also looking at developing things like design guidelines and standards for mobility hubs as technical resources for, for member agencies. And then you know different different policies that can support implementation um, in the region. And are you guys looking at you know consistent branding throughout all the mobility hubs, or does that go into the design guidelines? You know that's something that's come up in um, you know outreach to member agencies is this idea about having kind of branding and creating a real kind of sense of, of place. So that's a possibility. I think we would want to leave some flexibility though for you know local cities to be able to determine you know how they would want to, to do that branding, what's the identity that you know they want to convey. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks for that question. Thanks, Antoinette. Any any thoughts on the the OCTA or or SCAG approach to the mobility hubs and how, sort of, you know, thinking thinking about those strategies. You know, I, I recognize that that's not a specific strategy for SCAG on on the Mo Hub side, but um, wanted to you know leave some space for that. If there's any other thoughts on on approaches and maybe if that differs from the, how the Sandeg approaches. This is Narish uh, from SCAG. Um, Thanks, on the mobility hub side, I mean, I do uh, believe that uh, that we have uh, mobility hub as concepts um, embedded in our SES. But as far as you know, uh, identifying and defining in specific uh, locations of where those mobility hubs uh, uh, might be and, and so forth is is not something uh, that I believe we've we've, we've done in the uh, within the current scope of Connect SoCal. We feel like uh, it is uh, as as uh, others have said as well. It's more um, you know best uh, uh, done at the county and, and local jurisdiction level. So uh, I believe the the Connect SoCal provides an overarching. Um, and frame and policy framework for implementing mobility uh, hubs, but not necessarily uh, um, minute, you know, uh, details about uh, how they may be implemented. All right, thanks, thanks, Naresh. I see the next question, unless Zach, there's any other hands raised. Um, question from Warren Whitaker at OCTA um, on uh, asking to share thoughts on how complete corridors will work. So the question is, for example, concepts along the I-5 North, consider conversion of existing general purpose lanes to manage lanes, and then looking toward the rail option, um, you know, addressing commuter travel, but also weekend and special events. So um, yeah, I think this is one of those, those big ones, right? Like it seems like uh, Louisa had also asked about sort of agency approaches and policies. I think that, you know, my mind goes to a lot of the pricing and how you do this sort of corridor management side as we cross over like jurisdictional or agency uh, barriers. So um, I don't know if, if Tuera you'd like to share there or or even um, you know the approach from from OCTA or or Skag. I recognize that Warren's at OCTA asking the question, but um, I think it's a good one. And and I know we've been looking. Obviously, the the coordination side is so important. You know, obviously as we line not only our projects but our policies too as we you know, kind of put out documents that that speak to the phasing nature of these projects on both po policy and project ends. But um, this is a great, I think a, just a great question or just something to sort of spool on here. So anyone uh, want to jump in? I'm sorry, Phil, can you repeat which question it is that you're looking at? Yeah, I know there's a, but I'm trying to get, manage them all here. Um, so it's, it's from Warren Whitaker at OCTA. And the question is, please share thoughts on how complete corridors will work 
For example, concepts along I-5 North consider conversion of existing general purpose lanes to managed lanes. And the second half of the question is interregional transit between San Diego and Orange County primarily would be rail given um, the Marine Corps core base um, and rail options provide opportunity not only to address weekday commuter travel, but also weekend and special event trips. So kind of two halves of that, two sides of that question. Okay, uh, I'm, I'm not sure the second part was a question, but it looks like more like a statement and I think we concur right. um, with the interregional rail and, and when we're talking about the gateway mobility hubs and what we're looking to improve at Oceanside Transit Center, which currently does have the interregional access from Amtrak, Coaster here in San Diego, as well as Metrolink. Um, but in terms of how we look at complete corridors, we are looking at a more innovative way and in how we can take our existing infrastructure and how can we actually maximize you know, the capacity and throughput on that corridor. And so in building out our managed lanes network, we did look at, at opportunities and identified opportunities where we can either convert existing general purpose lanes to a managed lane or we could utilize shoulders for that. Um, and, and there's also cases where we are looking at potentially having to actually add lanes. And so from the perspective of the regional plan, you know, very high level, uh, a lot of study still needs to happen on those corridors, but we are looking at maximizing that. The other aspect, when we talk about the five big moves um, and them being very interreliant, the technology component is very important for the complete corridors concept, transit leap, you know, all of it to really work and come together. Because I, I think it was in the video you may have saw where we're looking at how we can dynamically manage uh, the lanes and corridors, which will allow us to facilitate being able to use those managed lanes um, when needed to offer you know, the most capacity that we can on those corridors and, and possibly during emergency situations, or there's times of the day where maybe we don't need to manage them exactly the same as we do during the peak period. So, so yes, we are, we are looking at innovative ways and in maximizing existing infrastructure, both existing today and anything that we would build in the future. So hopefully that, that's all I'll add for now, Phil, unless there's a follow-up yeah. question. Yeah, that's great. Thanks, Tor. And I, and I think, you know, I also think about um, kind of leveraging what we have right on the on the rail, even though the, the rail was a more of a comment than a question that, you know, that's a, a great opportunity to add the land use uh, that you, you showed in the mob mobility hub at Oceanside. And then as that connects all the way down at the central mobility hub, how we sort of leverage those existing events and make transit better on a quarter that already has a strong backbone, right? So that's that's kind of an interesting way that that we're approaching that to get every sort of every ounce so that we can out of those those existing projects. Um, speaking to what Maurice brought up before too, um, I'm looking to see if there's other questions here too. Um, um, let's see. I see one from, uh, looks like a phone number. There's high demand between San Diego and Orange County, LA uh, during weekends, holiday special events. Um, are we looking to any innovative uh, transit rail solutions through interregional partnerships to address the needs? So um, I don't know if there's any thoughts from, from the group there. I, I, maybe we have exhausted this one just on the, the last you know, question as we look at you know, coordinating on the corridors and the rail and the, and the, and the you know, rail transit and rail solutions. But um, anyone offer any other, other side to that? Okay, yeah, maybe we've covered that one. Already. Yeah, and I mean, and maybe yeah. maybe you could just add, Phil, that we're we're certainly open and I think willing and want to look for any opportunities where we could have strategic partnerships to improve our interregional travel. So we we may not have all of the details of something worked out specifically for this question related to holidays, weekends, or special events, but I, I we would certainly be open to having that discussion and and talking about that more. Yeah, thanks. And I think the place we are in our plan in terms of converting vision to plan, um, we're definitely open to that. And I think we're looking for uh, to ensure that we're connecting to both the Caltrans vision and, and the projects that are already included in the now adopted Connect SoCal plan. But anything more we can do uh, to that to that you know point, I think would be uh, appreciated to get feedback on that too. Uh, yeah, thanks, thanks, Tori. Well, um, I see, I yeah. see a couple of hands. Oh, raised. great. 
the first one from Greg Nord. Um, you should be able to unmute yourself, I think. Yeah, thank you. Uh, just want to mention that you know there is you know California high speed rail out there, uh, which would be kind of a new rail uh, connection down to San Diego eventually. Um, but I was curious how how you guys uh, address that in the plan so far. Yeah, no. Speaking from from Sandag, at least that we're seeing that piece as being farther outside of our our planning horizon envelope at 2050, kind of a beyond 2050. So, kind of tracking that in in terms of a need and a, a project. But uh, um, when I see Antoinette, you turn on your camera there. Yeah, but, we identify uh, it as a special project. So when you look at our transit leap map, you'll see kind of a dotted line that comes down the I-15. Um, and we show a potential branch that cuts over to the Oceanside Transit Center in the future as well. So we've acknowledged it in the plan as a special project that we don't necessarily have control over, but we would wanna um, you know, get, get benefits from it by that potential expansion over to Oceanside. Yeah, thanks. And, and I don't know if uh, Nancy or Nurse, you want to add on the, the, the SCAG approach too to make sure we're aligning. I, I wasn't aware if um, SCAG is looking at that as like a special project or or actually looking at some detailed phasing of that. I know we've gone back and forth as, you know, we've been trapped by speed rail authorities phasing. So I don't know if there's any uh, sort of. Yes. Uh, oh, great. Thanks. On the SCAG side, um, we have incorporated uh, the segment uh, um, all the way to Union Station and further south uh, ending in Anaheim as part of our constraint plan. Um, so based on the high-speed rails uh, latest business plan information, we have incorporated uh, that segment uh, within the SCAG region as constraint. As far as the, the segment that goes further south to uh, to uh, San Diego, we're in a similar boat as uh, as uh, you guys described. It, it is not part of the constraint plan, uh, but it's something that goes beyond the, the horizon of our plan. Yeah, thanks, Naresh. And maybe thinking openly a little bit, at, if we think of the terminus at, at Anaheim, does that put any pressure on the Low Sand Corridor or Metrolink Corridor as we speak to interregional travel for, for more people wanting to make those trips by by transit or mixed modes. So yeah, kind of an issue, you know, that's a that's a it's a really great question because you know we've kind of moved away from it in, in as Antoinette says a, as a special project. But yeah, any any thoughts on how we can do that better and sort of you know look at those maybe trips that are going to to Anaheim as part of, I guess, what I'm guessing is the 2050 portion of the plan and what, uh, you know, sort of demand they would have on interregional travel. It will oh, definitely, uh, definitely have a significant impact uh, on uh, our, um, you know, regional rail system in general. Um, and I believe so as part of the uh, high-speed rail development, there are uh, funds, uh, uh, perhaps not adequate, but, but at least uh, there are some funds allocate, allocated through the MOU with the High Speed Rail Authority to, uh, to make improvements on our you know, regional rail system, both uh, commuter rails as well as uh, the, uh, uh, the Amtrak and other you know, rail uh, facilities that, that could potentially feed into the ultimate uh, high speed rail system. Hmm. Well, I was just going to jump in and mention yeah. that we we have another hand, hand raised in the group. I think Danny Bay, feel free to unmute yourself. Okay, oh, thanks, Danny. Yeah, and I can't yeah, see hey, the uh, the hands. So yeah, thanks for doing that. I can see the comments, but I I don't have the hands on mine. So yeah, hey Danny. No, sorry, I, I jumped on a little late, um, but I just wanted to kind of hit on um, sort of the special event and holiday service. So like in the in the you know just even even. Um, you know, for the past few years, we've been, you know, working with the Losan agency on, you know, running special event trains specifically for Comic Con or the opening day of the Del Mar races. And then even on, you know, busy holiday uh, travels like Thanksgiving week, the, they'll run a special train set with 10 car trains and uh, running extra and even adding some extra round trips um, to accommodate that increased demand. Um, and the, pretty much during those 
those peak periods, the, the, you know, the Los Angeles is throwing out is basically every rail car that they have available. So, um, and there are, you know, it's in the works to acquire more rail cars and to add more service. And um, all of our stations are thousand foot long platform to accommodate these special tin car trains. So I think we're laying the groundwork for uh, an expansion of that um, flexibility to accommodate peak demands during these special events. And then um, I just also wanted to hit on um, something you guys just finished with a uh, high speed rail um, with, especially with the terminus in Anaheim. So one of the things that we're, I mean, we're looking at is improving, um, you know, speeds on the low sand corridor and the existing low sand corridor Del Mar tunnel that should in, increase speeds in a UTC tunnel that should cut the travel time um, by minutes. Um, and we're doing this, um, this, this study that's underway right now um, to kind of look at how we can incrementally, you know, achieve some of like toward high speed rail. So it's, it's getting the speed improvements and reducing the travel times to make it more competitive. Um, so we, we see that as, you know, I think there's a good synergy there with, um, with the high speed rail system phase one ending in Anaheim and how the Pacific Surfliner and the other commuter rail services can act as a feeder to that service. That's great. Thanks, Danny. Yeah, kind of that, that continuity or quality, continuity of quality and service is really important. And um, thanks for contributing with that. Uh, appreciate it. And I think that would probably be in, incumbent on us to work with um, also, uh, you know, Lausanne and, and OCTA as that sort of section between our, you know, border with the San, the San Diego border with Orange County uh, connects also to Anaheim. There's that, that segment too. So I don't, I don't know if that is something that we would we would want to have more partnership on or or have you, maybe that's a question to you, Danny, have we been working on that piece to ensure the continuity across um, leading all the way up to Anaheim. Yeah, I think that's that's something, um, and I don't know if there's any folks from the Los Angeles on the call, but um, I think that's something, um, you know, that's emerging right now in the state rail plan. Um, and um, the, you know, right now we're only looking at 2030 on, on our plans, um, at least from the Los Angeles side. So I think the next, um, the next update of, you know, the, of the plan that's again, 2050, it's definitely going to have to um, evaluate how high-speed rail is going to make the Lausanne corridor evolve. Great, thanks. Well, any other thoughts on the first couple questions? Maybe I was thinking we have about, you know, 20, 30 minutes left. Um, uh, you know, we've been talking so much about projects and this is, and thanks again for all that feedback and adding and hopefully we're, we're catching these ones in the chat and please raise your hand if you have any, any, you know, additional questions too, or just want to bring up some points. Um, uh, feel free to do that. Maybe if, if we, if there is a natural kind of connection here to um, the second, the, the final two questions here about what's working well with coordination and what perhaps can be enhanced. It would be great to have some conversations about how we sort of, you know, get together and make sure, you know, I think that Lausanne and the, the rail projects are a great example of that, right? Needing to, to coordinate and, and it, it seems like we're doing that really well. But um, we'd love to hear, you know, from, from all of you that are, are at agencies coordinating across uh, borders or across modes, uh, um, you know, what, uh, what's, what's working great and, and what, you know, if you have ideas for change that we could kind of look at. Hey, Phil, uh, before mm -hmm. we, uh, before we um, kind of pivoted to these last two questions about how do we coordinate, I saw Brian Cunanan's hand go up in the, oh, yeah. the group. So feel free, Brian, I think you can un unmute yourself. Exactly. Um, yeah, just, uh, in terms of interregional coordination, um, I just want to add, add, you know, the uh, the uh, I think it was Riley that mentioned the the holy grail earlier. If we can ultimately get to one universal app that takes you from point A to B and kind of handle all the transactions across providers in one app, uh, that's great. Um, you know, there's a reason Uber was so successful. It was, it was just easy and convenient, and if we can replicate that with transit. Uh, and even, you know, working with the private sector options, that that would that's a really good goal. Um, till then, maybe a baby step is to get 
to start getting everybody in our regions onto one source of information. Um, right now, across the two planning agencies, we have three 511 traveler information deployments, uh, LA that covers Orange County and Ventura. Uh, we do the Inland Empire one that covers Riverside and San Bernardino. And of course, there's the San Diego deployment. Actually, I'd say there's four if you include the, the Caltrans 511 deployment. Um, but I can speak for IE, there's a significant amount of web traffic and phone calls that come into that system. Uh, and I think it'd be great if we can start uh, moving people to a singular source of information, you know, if we can start integrating into one 511 system. We're, we're actually in the process of that right now of integrating with LA's system, um, just given that there's so much inter-county travel, but, you know, obviously there's a lot of inter-county travel uh, south. Uh, as well. Um, and, you know, within, you know, if we can get everybody on one source of information, you know, there's a lot of opportunities to upsell them into alternative modes uh, as part of the interactions with that system. Um, and if we can get to that holy grail point, uh, you know, at least everybody's conditioned to uh, go to one place for that information. Yeah, thanks for, for sharing that. Yeah, that, that goal of a universal app. I, I know we've been so data driven that we're really relying on, on on data in so many ways for planning, but also, you know, in the future for for operations. Um, any other, you know, love to hear other thoughts too on the data, data needs and and sort of data sharing and agreements. Are we are we lacking those? Is that something, yeah, is that this precursor to really um, leveraging technology in these plans to to have, you know, lay the groundwork there? Um, anyone else want to chime in? I, I couldn't agree more. I think that's that's really uh, something that you know, as as planners too, we're we're thinking in such different ways, right, to, than we were in the in the past of just you know concrete and rebar projects, right? That's sort of the the flow of information is is so critical to it all. Any other thoughts on that point? Well, thank you, Brian, for for sharing that. Um, yep. So I don't see any other hands raised okay. at this time. Yeah, thanks for for looking. Um, okay, maybe we can uh, kind of you know pivot toward, and we've you know we've we've talked with this and sort of this the concept of of our coordinate or coordination, and obviously Brian speaks to it on the the data side for sure. Um, and and that's an area obviously with that could use obvious enhancements or just you know more focus, I guess. Um, over time as technology changes. But yeah, maybe we'd love to hear with some folks of, of what's working well and, and what can be enhanced. I know Sandag takes the coordination side very seriously and, and has tried to really coordinate with all the, our, our bordering agencies with the, you know quarterly uh, groups on the planning side, uh, but perhaps more can be done. Um, we'd love to just hear some thoughts about, you know, how you see interregional coordination and is it in, are we sort of state of health? <laughs> are, we, are, we, are we doing, Doing the work that we should be doing, and what what would you suggest? Any takers on that? Any hands, Zach? Not seeing any quite yet. Okay, I don't know if any of our team members or panelists, or, you know, Skag would like to to chime in. Don't want to put anybody on the spot, but. Um, you know, would love to hear if, if sort of if in an, an ideal world, right? What would what would coordination look like? Uh, maybe that's a different way to uh, to approach it. I think part of the reason why uh, no hands up is uh, what we have is is uh, working pretty well. I mean, we have, like you said, the quarterly uh, meetings on the planning side uh, involving. Uh, you know, uh, the commissions as well as Caltrans and District SCAG, where we share information um, and, uh, you know, we um, make sure that everybody is aware of, uh, of you know, major issues that are coming up uh, within their own agencies. And so uh, that, is, that is working pretty well. Perhaps uh, um, we can, you know, continue uh, having you know, uh, this type of webinar uh, on a larger scale uh, that, that involves you know, more agencies, perhaps uh, you know, some, of, some of the larger you know, transit agencies, uh, as, well as, as well as some of the local jurisdictions in, uh, 
having a broader you know, dialogue uh, might be helpful. Um, but like I said, uh, I think um, the process that we have right now is working reasonably well. Uh, and I'm not sure there's a whole lot of, lot of uh, changes that needs to be made to what we already have. Thanks, Naresh, for adding. Maybe as projects come online, right, that would be a good opportunity to bring in sort of the operators, whether on the technology piece or even the land use, you know, authorities and especially, you know, transit transit providers or service providers. So, I see a hand raised um, from Greg Nord. Um, feel free to unmute, Greg. Thanks, yeah, Greg. Thank you. Um, so yeah, we're we're working on our South Orange County uh, multimodal transportation study, um, and we've we've initiated. You know our technical working groups, which you, know, you guys are a part of. Um, but one thing we've done there is we've we've actually have two technical working groups. We have one with the local jurisdictions, who tend to have you know very focused communities, and then one with more regional agencies, so SANDAG, SCAG, Caltrans, FHWA, uh, Metrolink, TCA, um, and that has. So far, it seemed to work pretty well. I mean, I'd, I'd like to, if you guys have thoughts on how that's going, I'd, I'd like to hear. It. But um, so far, it's it's been good, and it's it's allowed sort of the different voices from the regional perspective and the local perspectives to not really conflict too much, or like not one group is dominating the conversation. So that is that's worked well for us in that study. Greg, can I ask it, it was that a model that you used from another project or is that just based on what you felt was the needs and objectives of, of this particular study? Yeah, it's, it's something else. kind of a new approach that we decided to try for this study, um, just for that reason to try to keep the, the, you know, there are so many agencies that, that could be involved with this, you know, it's, it's all the way from the state route 55, you know, south to the San Diego border. So it's a, a large area in, in uh, Orange County. So there's a lot of agencies involved. And so we want to make sure that, you know, try to make sure that we're hearing all the different perspectives. And so we thought that that would be a good kind of breaking point is, you know, maybe keep the locals in one group and regional uh, perspectives in another group and kind of hear those separately and, and you know, try to bring them together um, eventually. But. Great, thanks. Yeah, and we appreciate it being part of that that study. Um, yeah, it's, and it just, I think it really speaks to yeah the, the differences. You know, with, you can be a little bit more agile, right, with these with these specific studies and make sure you you meet the objectives. But yeah, that's definitely a creative approach. That's that's really really interesting. Um, scanning through to see if we have more questions. Any of the teams see any additional questions? Um, let's see. Um, oh, any any plans to gather and integrate data? Um, are we consider pr pricing the entire corridor as a concept in this plan? I heard the concept is floating in the Bay Area, Bay Area recently. Um, I don't know if there's if anyone wants to jump in or raise a hand to, to clarify that. But I know, yeah, I think the question came up about you know sort of data integration is it is it something that we're all working on and and see as an area of improvement. Um, I would say from the pricing perspective, as we look from for Sandag, as we phase our project and look look to OCTA and and SCAG about where sort of the the alignment of the pricing strategies and make sure we're we're you know kind of considering that or or just or strictly align, aligning to the the approach would be I think helpful, right? We want to make sure it's clear from the passenger perspective. I know Sandag has been taking a very passenger focused approach on our projects, right? So um, in that you know, goes everywhere from the uh, the transit connectivity, but also to the you know the policy or pricing elements on the corridors. Um, but I don't know if there's any additional. Anyone else want to jump in on that one? Um, on the 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 sort of you know Bay. I am not sure about the Bay Area um, kind of you know example there, but. Let's see. Well, I'm not seeing any other, are there any other questions? Um, 
or comments. Any anyone else have a, a comments about any of these these questions? I know we don't need to go all the way to the the twelve o'clock hour, and I don't want to you know artificially extend this if we don't need to. But um, want to make sure there's there's space for folks to contribute and 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 discuss. Zach, do you see any other hands raised? Not at the moment, no. Okay. We'll leave it up to um, just ask the team before I make uh, concluding remarks here. Um, if there's anything else to, that kind of been bubbling as the, the conversations been going on here that you wanted to add, either um, yeah, uh, SCAG or, or Sandeg staff. Okay. Well, I think, you know, I think we can, can kind of get to this, this wrap up and, and, you know, nothing real fancy here, but I wanted to just thank everyone for, for, you know, attending and, and all the coordination work that you all do with your cross agency partners. I know Sandak has really appreciated being involved with that. And, and I think this, this type of collaboration that we're doing today speaks to how we can improve plans and, and sort of, you know, work through um, uh, the development of these long range plans and, and appreciate, you know, SCAG's involvement with this and, and our Sandag staff too. Um, wanted to circle back a bit to our timing. So Sandag's looking at developing now kind of transitioning this vision into a plan uh, that would be phased and would have all the policy elements and, and coordination elements to that um, over the coming months and uh, look to release the uh, draft plan uh, in the uh, sort of, you know, late spring, early summer. Um, and our plan is to have a, fi a final plan um, uh, around the, the winter time, uh, you know, within calendar year 2021, but it's toward the end of the latter stage there. So, um, so that's what we're what we're pivoting to. I think we see this uh, this opportunity to to, to share and discuss uh, interregional collaboration as being you know perfectly timed for our effort and really uh, you know excited to to see all the folks and all the different agencies that are represented and and being part of this. Um, we'll look to reach out as we have a, a draft plan or significant plan components do something similar. So hopefully uh, this was was helpful and interesting. I know uh, in kind of planning this, we thought, you know, some of you had probably seen either the, the SCAG and SANDAG plans probably in, in, in some pretty, some, you know, some significant depth, but maybe not both plans together. So, you know, we were hoping this would would engender some some conversation about um, connectivity that we have and being kind of the majority of the state, right, between the SCAG and, and SANDAG uh, areas, which is which we all see is, is quite significant. So um, we're really excited to, to put this vision into motion and, and this transition to a plan. Um, the uh, um, uh, let's see, I'm looking to see if there's more questions coming in here, too. Um, but you know we appreciate the the collaboration and and please reach out uh, either to myself or the team or Zach um, if you have any feedback or anything that you sort of you know you think of after this this session. Uh, like I said, we've been reaching out to to partners within um, our our Sandag region and then at our sort of you know binational area with similar conversations like this about about our efforts and vision. Um, but definitely we're looking forward to, to more. And as Zach said at the beginning, this is sort of first of many in terms of our 2021 uh, specific cycle. So um, with that, I just wanted to, to thank everybody for, uh, for participating and, um, and looking forward to, to, to seeing all of you again on, on future workshops. And, uh, and thanks again for your collaboration. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.